I was born and raised on the ranch, so we had mustard in the spring. And when the prune orchard and the pear orchard turned yellow, it was so magnificent. And we used to roll in it. We were all poor, uh, and there wasn't paper and pencils and that sort of thing around at that period in time. So we didn't have the material. But I always thought I would be an artist, and I was always aware of color. Color seemed to be so important to me. And so that's why I, I kept hanging in there. I, I relate to color, I always did. I mean, color was so important to me. And riding in the car, you see the clouds or the sunset. I saw them, and there wasn't that many people around. You know, the ranches were large, so therefore going down Ramel Road, there were just big ranches with big Victorian houses, but there wasn't a lot of people, and there wasn't very many children. So we grew up pretty, pretty lonely. You learned how to entertain yourself. Well, we had we had a a, a, a little schoolhouse out there, oh. to to this, and uh, I enjoyed school, and there was only five or six students, and they had to have five in order to keep the school door open, so they usually had to hire a teacher with a child or two. But I I really did I enjoyed. Enjoyed school very much, and I was in the, in the seventh and eighth grade. I was the only girl in school, and I was the only one in my class. So it's a good thing I could think of painting and think of colors, because I had to entertain myself. <laughs> was After I got into high school. My freshman year, I took the art class, Mr. Strife, and he was wonderful. He realized all my my problems and the fact that we were lonely, and he was just wonderful. And I learned a lot from Mr. Strife, and that got me started. But I was 32 when I actually started and took some lessons. Braden had three kids, and I said the youngest one was five years old. I said, okay, they're old enough now where I can leave for the evening with their father, and I can take the lessons, and I did, and I stuck with that. The class we took with George Holtz was wonderful. We had to go to Nevada, to Virginia City, and there was an old building there that was a hospital. It was built when people started coming to the West Coast. He came out, out of San Francisco and so forth for a week, and we all went up. We took our food and our blankets, and. We went up for that week, and that was the most marvelous week. It was like going to heaven. After we had a critique, and he said that morning, he said, I want all of you to do a street scene. So I did, we did a street scene, and I did a street scene, and the street scene was pretty good. But before we left the studio, he says, when you do your painting, I want you to put some people in. So we all went out and did our street scene. Well, I did, just did mine. I, thought, I like what I did, but I, I hate the idea of having to put people in. But anyway, that was our instruction, so I did. When it came to the critique, put it up on the easel, and he looked at it, and he said, 
why did you put people in that painting? Because you told us to. He says, well, you learn a lesson. You don't do everything that everybody tells you what to do. You do what you want to do. He said, did you want the people? I said, no. He said, well, I hope you learned something here today. And I never forgot that. And another one of his favorite speeches was, if you put a painting up of that, on that easel that has a corny blue sky, I won't even look at it. Because I want a sky to be interesting. If the rest of the painting's interesting, it's got to be interesting. But no corny blue sky. And so I've told that, I think, a hundred times to other artists, no corny blue skies. <laughs> I've done every media there is. I was always looking for color. Um, I did pen and ink, did etching, did pencil, watercolor, oil, and then finally in the pastel. But I never could like with watercolor, you put the color down and while it was wet, the color was beautiful. Well, then you go away, you come back an hour later and it's dry. The color, a beautiful color was gone. It wasn't, you didn't have that sparkle. This lady put some chalk in my hand and she said, here, try this. So I tried it and after I had a couple of colors on, I knew I was hooked. I started with shows before I went to George and Eleanor. Uh, the plaza was starting in having the vintage festival, and so that that's how we started showing. Just whatever whatever you did, uh, whatever however it was framed or not framed. I mean, we were very amateur, all of us. But we, again, we all got get together and get your work together. We always had a good time. Well, it depends each day. I, get, I, I wake up early, so I get up. And I'm in my jammies and my slippers, and I go right to the... Because my easel is about three feet from my bed, so I don't have far to travel to my studio. So I just paint probably two hours. <laughs> <laughs>